New York, 1982. I don't know if it's 1 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, listen, bro, I've seen enough, had enough. I got Skaggs is over by the table. I said, I guarantee you that check. You didn't cash it? No, no. That check is gone, bro. That, it'll bounce. This whole thing is just fraud. It's a fucking fraud, bro. They made a fool of us. No, no, Samuel, see, he's, he's a millionaire. I don't give a fuck if he's a millionaire. He's just fucking nuts. Two. So anyway, they go to him and they tell him, the night is over. You got, we're gonna close. He tells them, no. No, I'll tell you when we're gonna close. We'll close tomorrow morning, seven, eight in the morning. I got more people coming, I got this, I got that. And they, he sees Skaggs and some of the people coming over to me, the table I'm sitting at, and he tells Michael DeMatt, that guy over there, everybody seems to go to him, throw him out. I don't want him here. He wants to throw me out. For the first time ever, Sammy the Bull Gravano tells his story. This is our thing. This guy comes over to me. What's your name, he tells me. I said, the last time I met you, don't you remember I met you? No, I don't remember nothing. I asked you what your name is. I go like this with my hands. I want my guys to sit down. And I do not want something to erupt in this place. It's a fucking gold mine. We can get through this. I just go like this, and otherwise my guys know when I do that, calm the fuck down. So I said, my name is Sammy. We met before, but that doesn't matter. Maybe I'm a little drunk. No, I'm not drunk. Well, listen, I understand they told us that it's going to close. We, got, we all got to leave. I'm not leaving. I had a little bit of, like, I had enough of this fuck. I tell him, no, bro. Take it from me. You're going to leave. You're going to leave. It's time for the place to close. It's a business. You, they tell you you got to go. You got to go. It's over. You had a whole night. You had fun. There's shit all over the place. You have people eating with their hands. There's stuff for food all over the fucking place. The place is a mess. Get the fuck out. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I got him up to my eyebrows already. I have enough of him. I, he leaves and walks away from me and walks to where he is. He goes into a bag. Gets a bag and he gets something out of the bag. A piece of metal. It's not a gun or anything like that. He walks over to me and he says, I'm a hero. And he's got this medal, like a war medal or something. I says, I mean, I'm not interested in that. And he throws it at me and he, it like bounces right off my chest. Three of my guys spring to their fucking feet. I says, I said, sit down. Michael pulls them away from me right away. I said, Michael, he's got bags over there. Go through those bags. I said, he says, I went through the bags already. What's in them? He's got a gun. I took it. It's in my waistband. Good. You got no other weapons than that? No. Okay. I'm going to walk out of here because I think I'm inciting this fucking thing. I'm making it worse. I'm going to walk out. Tell him. He left. The place is closed. You have to stop. Skeggs, put the fucking lights on so that the whole thing stops. Stop the music. Stop everything. It's over. I'm, I'm going to be right outside. You, Michael, or Huck, if something breaks out, Come down and call me right away. I'm gonna walk out with four guys. I'll, I'll be right back in. I leave. We're parked a half a block away. We're watching the place. 
the place is emptying out. Now it started where it got to maybe 100 people, maybe there was 50 left at that point, and they're leaving. I get a signal that they're gone. There's only my people there. Michael comes over, he called you everything under the sun. Good, good. Remember Luca Brazia and the Godfather? I told Mike, yeah, when he went to go meet the other side, yeah, 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 that part. Stay close to him, like you're his friend. Badmouth me. Tell him you don't like me, you hate me, I think who I am. Stay close, let him open, get in his, get in his head. See what he's thinking, what he's saying. I want to know. All right. The night is over. Friday morning, Joe Skaggs comes and he tells me he's insulted that we closed the place. He's insulted about things that you said. He wants to buy the whole building, the disco, the building, everything. He knows your office is down. He wants you out. He wants to buy you out. He wants to buy me out. Yeah. Tell him it's not for sale. Well, wait, Sammy, let me just tell you what he said. What? He wants to buy me out. Yeah. But he wants to give you a million dollars to get out. He wants to give me a million dollars. Yeah. Now, the building is worth, back then, maybe two, two fifty, three hundred thousand. The disco could have been worth that much in itself. So you're talking maybe five, six hundred thousand if you got somebody who wanted to buy the whole thing. He's, he's had a million dollars. More than the building is worth, more than the club is worth. And that million dollar, my greed bells started to ring. They went off. Tell them I'm not interested in the money. If the number was a hell of a lot more, I might be interested. And I don't want to talk to them. You guys talk with them. You talk with them, Skeggs. There's a dialogue going on. Goes up to, I think, a million three fifty, a million five, whatever it was. I said, okay, you'd have to go to lawyers and bring lawyers in and whatever. This is not. He agrees. By Monday, late afternoon, early night, we agree to a number. And we, got, we agree to a meeting is going to happen for him to buy this whole thing. And they're telling me that they're showing me articles that he's legitimately wealthy, he has this shipping company, he has all this bullshit he's got. And he does own a fucking plane. Now, Friday comes and goes. Saturday, I have made guys from three different clubs on really the other side of Brooklyn come looking for me. Hey, pal, Ali Shades, one of the guys. He was with the Genovese family. He was a made guy at this particular time. He became a captain. And he says, Sammy, bro, we, we got the club over here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't remember the name of the club. Yeah, I know. Why would you do something like that last night? What did I do? What are you talking about? He said, we had a nice little line outside the place and uh, a helicopter come out and a guy with a bullhorn is screaming through the bullhorn, don't go to this club, go to the Plaza Suite. <laughs> I started laughing, I says, bro, do you think I would do that? This fucking nut came to the place, wants to buy the place. I guarantee it's this fucking maniac who's doing it. I wouldn't do that. You think I would fly around with a fucking helicopter telling people where to go to a club to dance? Come on, bro. 
This is how it starts. And it gets fucking crazy. Three different clubs, three different clubs were controlled by mob people are coming to me now. I got to go see him. I go see him. Frank, you went around with a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the best club. You got to, this is what you got to do. You got to advertise. You got to do this. So I, you can't do that. They're my friends. You can't do that. You, this, this isn't Czechoslovakia. This is Brooklyn, New York. You can't do that. You can't do it. Now, if we're going to make a deal, we got to go with lawyers. We got to do it very quiet. We got to do this, that, and the other thing. He says, I could give you the money. I could give you some money under the table. Cash. Good. Good. I'll take 600000 under the table, and we'll leave us a balance of eight, nine 900000 I'll even give you a little break if you can do that. He could do it. He meets with my lawyers. I wish I remember the place. Kiss. His lawyers were talking to buy Kiss radio station, whatever it is. That's a big station. This guy really is loaded. And his, his lawyers are in some sort of negotiation. It's crazy. It's getting crazier and crazier and crazier every single day. Now he meets with my lawyers. And right in the meeting, I mean, he don't even try to keep it quiet. I'm going to give Sammy 600000 in gold. Goes to Czechoslovakia with me on the plane. I fly it in. I do this. He brings in an army truck and we unload. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not doing that. What the fuck is, what do you think, this is a James Bond movie? I'm not doing that, bro. Now, first of all, I'm not going to Czechoslovakia with you. That's number one. Or you, uh, I'm not getting on your plane. And I'm not coming in with no army truck to pick the fucking gold up. He makes an appointment down in Manhattan in a bank, a foreign bank. I'm so fucking twisted now on this money I go to this bank with my brother-in-law. We have two suitcases each. I want to go in there and walk out with five, six hundred thousand dollars of gold. I'm, I think I lost my mind doing this fucking thing. This guy made me crazy. They would have gave us the money, the gold. But they wanted us to sign documents and papers. So this is supposed to be money under the table. I'm not going to sign no documents and papers. Long story short, we walk out with nothing. One insane story after the other is going on. The meeting with my lawyer, he don't show up. Something happens, this happens. The check, by the way, from that night in the Plaza Suite bounced. We never got that money. I'm having enough for him. I'm, I'm growling at him every once in a while when he talks to me. I don't like the way he talks to me. I don't like the way he talks, period. And uh, he comes around with a little pack of people all the time. Like they're, some of them are bodyguards, some of them are girls, some of them are... I'm not crazy about this guy at all. I, I don't even like him. Forget about crazy about him. I don't like him at all. He's just com like a complete psycho. I get a call, my sister worked for me in my office. And she says, that guy f that you're dealing with, this nut, Frank Paella, yeah, he's in the place. He came in our office and he told everybody to leave, it's his building. And he has people breaking the wall where the staircase going up is so that from the office, you could just go into this back stairwell that goes up into his place and he's making it like Fort Knox. And he's took over your office. He's sitting in your office. I said, that's a little too far. I said, Eddie, let's go back to the office. There's a problem. I tell my sister, 
Tell all the girls and everybody to go home. Just go home, get out of there. Get out of here. Don't listen to what he says. He's a fired, just get up and leave. Don't argue with him, leave. I'm afraid he'll lie to hurt one of them or do something. So I go there, I walk in there, the girls are gone. He comes to the door. He opens the door for me to come in. And he says, come with me to my office. And he's walking to the back. That's my office. He makes the turn into my office and me and my brother Lavetti are following right behind him. He gets behind my desk, he opens the drawer and he pulls out an Uzi machine gun. My brother-in-law is dark skinned. He was as white as a fucking t-shirt. He, we thought we were getting hit. Told us to sit down. I sat down, my whole body tightened up, waiting for these bullets to come in me. I thought for sure I'm dead. My brother thought that too. And he was talking. It gave me a second to think. If I was gonna get killed, he's gotta pull the trigger. He didn't pull the trigger, he's talking. So I started talking fast. Frank, what are you doing, bro? We're gonna meet with the lawyers tomorrow. We're gonna straighten this out. There's a couple of little bullshit hurdles. I mean, come on, bro. Put that down, what are you doing? You know, I mean, I know you're, you're aggravated. I mean, you sure? You, you people? You people, us grease balls, us this, us that, he's calling me. All right, all right. You know, we, we sometimes we're a little aggressive. I know, we made a mistake, I apologize. But put that down, come on, bro. We're gonna talk with the lawyers tomorrow. Everything is gonna be cool. You take, mark my words. We got this. Uh, you're fixing the place, that's good. I love the, the way you're gonna go right up into the place from here, that's great. That's a great idea. He tells us to leave. Me and Eddie get up and we're walking through the hall. I'm still tight as a drum. I'm thinking maybe he'll shoot me from the back, but he don't shoot. I open up the door. As I'm opening the door to go out, I says to Eddie, get all my guys, tell them to meet me in docks. Sammy, would you shut the fuck up? I'm not asking for your advice. Tell everybody to meet me now. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him tonight. Now, I don't want, I'm not asking you for advice. Keep your fucking mouth shut and go make some calls. And I go. I don't have time to go to Paul Castellano or do anything or even to Tato. I don't want to involve nothing in this. I get my whole crew, and then some. I tell Michael the bat, when I'm gonna kill him, you stand near the door. You're the bouncer at the door. You start screaming to everybody, oh my God, they have guns, so go upstairs. Make everybody run. Grab the door and hold it closed. Huck, you do this. Louie, Stymie, get around to the side of the building. When he comes out the office and walks around the corner and is coming towards the door for the Plaza Suite, me and Eddie will be standing right there. The signal will be when I say, Frank, how you doing, buddy? You two guys run out and start shooting. We'll all have guns. You, Nikki Cowboy, you pull up with a car as soon as this is done. The shooters will jump in the car, you take off with them. Another guy, he pulls up. Everybody dumped their guns in there. <sighs> He's gonna walk with a pack of people. Whoever makes a move, after the shooters move towards us or towards them, kill them. I don't give a fuck who they are, kill them. That night, 
everybody was in place. Crash cars, getaway cars, cars that took the guns to dump that, car that took the shooters, Michael the Bat Hawk controlling the in and out of going in the Plaza Suite. He came around the corner with a small entourage of guys and people and women. He was in front of the pack. Me and Eddie were about 25, 30 feet away from the door, leaning against the parked car. As soon as he got about 30, 40 feet away from me, he turned and looked at me. I said, hey, buddy, what's up? He took a step or two towards me with a grin on his face when the two shooters came out. They killed him in a matter of seconds. He got a multitude of shots in him, blew both of his eyes out, blew the top of his head off, hit him in the chest, he was gone instantly. A huge puddle of blood dripping down immediately. Every man there went for their gun, our guys, my guys, f looking at their guys. They didn't know what the fuck way to run. They, weren't, they didn't have guns, they didn't try to have guns, and if they had them, they didn't try to pull them out. They would have got hit in two seconds. The girls just didn't even, again, flop and didn't know which way to go. In a matter of minutes, the cops were there pulling out of squad cars, pulling out yellow tape, putting yellow tape all around the crime scene. Some people got away, some people didn't even get away. Me and Eddie didn't get away. We were the last guys to move. The car came and took the hit team and left. The car just missed being stopped when all my guys, me and all my guys, put the guns in that car. That car disappeared. So me and Eddie were stuck. The reason why they showed up so quickly, the night before there was some sort of a racial incident. The cops were afraid there was gonna be racial problems. So they were cruising all around the neighborhood. I guess the second they got this call, they notified the police cars, and that's why they were there so quickly. Yellow tape and cops all around. I gave Michael the bat the sign. Unlock the door, go back upstairs. Cops wouldn't let anybody move. People outside, standing on the sidewalk, they were looking for witnesses and whatever the fuck they were doing. I said, let's just try to walk away slow. We pulled away from the car and started moving. The cops said, you just gotta stand where you stand to freeze. We froze. A girl, a couple of girls, but one of them, they parked their car in the parking lot. And I guess they were gonna go to the plaza suite just before they hit. One of them start talking loud as she's walking towards this barrier. Sammy, I parked the car, are you coming? So the guy said, who's that? I says, that's my girl. She just parked the car. We, we got out before, you know, and she parked the car and I walked over here. Did you see anything? He had, didn't have a clue who the fuck I was. I said, no, I didn't see none. She came right through the barrier. Come on. I said, oh my God, something happened here. What, what the hell is going on? Did you see anything? No, we just pulled in. That was there already, oh my God. She carried on like an actress. The cop says, okay, go ahead. You and her and my brother, you just could leave. I put my arm around her. I kissed her like it was my girl. I said, I'll never forget that. She said, you know my uncle. Of course I know your uncle. 
this is what I would do. And I think the world of you. You know, I, I hope I got you out of this. Listen, I really wasn't even in it. I wasn't going to tell her that I was involved in this thing. I said, I, just, I actually walked into the fucking thing. I don't even know what the fuck happened. So I wasn't in trouble. But what you tried to do, you thought I did this, right? Yeah, I did. I didn't. But what you tried to do, I really appreciate it. Never forget it. Someday I'll see your uncle soon. And uh, I owe you big time. Just for your attempt, but I had nothing to do with it. I wouldn't admit to nothing. We got to our car. She gave me another kiss. This was a real kiss. And I let her go. That opened up the door to a multitude of investigations. A bunch of things happened. I did get 350,000 in cash under the table before we concluded the deal. We did have another quarter of a million tied up in legal bullshits. But I had a lot to do now. I had to go down, they took our liquor license. The club immediately closed down from that hit, never opened again. I immediately had to go to Vinny Sicilian. I started with him. I said, bro, a multitude of things happened. I heard about all these things, Sammy. I wondered how long you would take it. It got to a whole nother level, Sammy. Fuck the joint. I got a little piece. You're my friend. I don't even explain it to me. I don't give a fuck. Fuck the club. I gave him a hug, kiss on the cheek. I went down to Coney Island, went and see Salty. Told him the same thing. If you feel you lost money, if you feel there's a number that I owe you, bro, uh, Sammy, you crazy, don't even do that. We're brothers, bro. And you did a great fucking job. Fuck the joint, fuck the money. That's Cosa Nostra. They both walked away from the club, the argument, the beef. Didn't want to argue. I blew the club, blame me for anything. Nothing. Took my back and didn't want a penny. The government was different. The government was all over me. Investigations were flying all over the place. I saw Frankie DeChico the next day. I told Frankie the entire story like I'm telling you. Actually, it was so fresh, I told him every detail. The next day, it was in the newspapers. It was blasted all over the place. Ties to the Gambino family. He must have been a millionaire. All this fucking stuff there's in newspapers and every place about him. There's articles popping out who he was, what he was. And when they came after the next day to, that they took his body and cleaned up the office that he was in, there was three or two or three Doberman pinches attack dogs that he had in there already. He was bunking himself in. There was weapons in there. He was gonna make a fucking military base out of this thing and fight me. Fight the Italian mafia. Fight us grizzballs. Didn't work out for him, but he lost. But I was in trouble. Frankie came back to me and reported to Paul. It was the same exact as it was in the newspaper. I've never seen a uh, newspaper be that exact, but he brought the exact story back. Paul was accused of me of doing a hit off the record, not asking for permission. Sammy had it wrong. 
He had to come to me. I'm the boss. He needed my nod. I don't want to meet him. When Frankie tells me the story, he said, Sammy, if he gives me your ticket, or he gives it to anybody in my knowledge, all I'm going to say is, don't meet me. Don't meet me means there's a hit on me. I would know that. I got my whole crew up to my farm. I congratulated them on their loyalty and what they did. I said, I have a problem with this. It's not your problem. You've done nothing wrong. Anybody who don't want to be here and stay with my problem, and I don't blame you, leave. Leave now. We'll always be friends. Matter of fact, you guys who leave, if anything happens, take care of my wife and my kids. Don't try to get even. Don't try and do anything. So I want some of you to leave. It's not cowardice. I want you to leave. Those are the guys who leave. You're responsible for my wife and kids. The guys who were going to stay, I told them, go home, load up. Don't come here with pistols, the heavy stuff, shotguns, Uzis. We're going to go to war. I did the right thing by protecting Paul, and now I'm being accused of breaking the rules. I might get whacked for this. I can't accept that. I was in a war with the gallows. I knew what it entailed. I knew what would happen. I actually knew we couldn't win, but I was convincing myself we're not going to go down easy. Me and my guys were in trouble. When you come, you're going to be by my side. We're going to take an oath to each other. We're all going to go down together. It's not going to be easy. We can't win. So understand, whenever you go get shotgun, an Uzi, we're all going to die for what I did. You don't have to come back. No one, no one left. Not one. My whole crew, 10, 12, 15 strong. stood there. I said, I need some of you to leave, not be part of this. No one would leave. I stayed 19 fucking days before Paul Castellano was willing to meet me. In a restaurant in Manhattan. Him and Tommy Bellotti wanted to see me and Louis Melito. Louis Melito was one of the shooters. He knew that. I met him. And in this, he told me, what you did is did work off the record. You didn't ask permission. I said, Paul, what I did, you know the entire story. 
I'm not going to tell you again. But what I did, I made that decision. I knew you would give me permission for everything he did. For me to have that happen, come up to your house, meet with you, knowing the FBI is watching you, they would see me walk in, and then this would happen in the plaza suite. I was afraid that they, if they put two and two together, they would link it to you. That's why I sent Frankie after, and I didn't come myself, because it was linking this whole fucking thing to me. I tried to avoid putting you in trouble, involved in this thing, that there was a direct meeting before and a direct meeting after. He says, you're not the only tough guy. Tommy Blatty's a tough guy. He's got a gun. I said, he don't need a gun. You want me dead, Paul, for what I did? Give the order. Give me the gun. My car's parked outside. I'll go right in front and I'll blow my fucking brains out. When you walk out, you'll see that I conform to your order. One of the reasons I did that, I was thinking, if I go to war, I can't win. Me and my crew will die. They did nothing wrong. They followed my orders to the T. They risked their lives. I thought back. But a guy named Johnny Keys. The night he died, he taught me goes in Austria in a whole different way, in a different light. He taught me how to die like a man. It was my turn to die and to die like a man. So I was taking the weight by saying that I'll die, my, I'll kill myself, I'll die in the car. I knew at that point my crew wouldn't be touched. They would be satisfied. If that's what it took, that's exactly what the fuck I would have done. You could never, ever do this again. You always have to ask me my permission. Louis has his hand on my wrist now. We're out of it. We're gonna make it. I said, I can't make that promise. If it comes to saving you, and I'm gonna go because of that, then so be it. Louis now kicking me in the fucking leg like, Paul is smiling. You do have fucking balls. You do have balls. Even Tommy Bellotti is not smiling, but smirking and nodding his head. As if to say, what I just said is right. That goes in Austria. I'm supposed to protect you. You're the boss of the family. You can't tell me not to protect you. That would be a cowardice fucking move. And I'm not a coward. I may not be the toughest guy in the fucking world, but I'm not a coward. He huffed and puffed a little bit. It's over. The Plaza Suite thing, story, is over, but not quite. After a while, I did get indicted. Me, my brother-in-law, and a few other guys. The people who made the money flow, the 350000 to me, a check cashing place, we did all kinds of things to get that money turned into cash, and I got it. The trial went on for a while. My accountant 
came in and took the stand. My lawyer asked him, he didn't pay taxes on that money, right? No. But the following year, he attempted to pay taxes. He told you to pay the tax, right? Yes. There was a crack in the case. At the end of the trial, my lawyer, Jerry Chagall, very famous lawyer, asked the jurors, Mr. Gravano's got an eighth grade education. I don't know your education level, but if you go to an accountant to pay your taxes and the accountant says, don't pay them this year, pay them next year. Would you not listen to him? Or would you just pay him whenever you feel like it? And people are like nodding as if to say, yeah, of course I would listen to the accountant. The accountant actually bailed me out when he made that statement on the oath. What the accountant said on the stand, on the oath, what the lawyers did, we were all found not guilty. Not just me. But the IRS barreled in and wanted the money. Of course, now I'm actually admitting I got the money. I got out of it by saying I didn't pay it then. I got it, but I didn't pay it then. I paid it here. So I beat the tax evasion case, but now I owe the money. I owned a 30-acre farm, horse breeding and training farm at that time in my life in New Jersey. The government was taking my house that I live with, my wife and kids, and or the farm, until I paid everything. I decided on selling the farm that my loved, my, my wife loved it, my children loved it. We had it for a, a couple of years. That was my, my way of leaving the neighborhood and having a, a family normal life, my getaway. I had to give it up. I sold the farm for a little over 350,000. I took that money and some other monies that I had in the bank. I paid all my lawyers fees, taxes and everything. And I was broke again. Seems like the story of my life. As a kid, my family growing up broke. I went to riches. And I went broke. I came back and I went to riches. And then I was broke again. New York, 1985. Things were going great. In the beginning with Paul, I loved the guy, he was great. And I was earning very well under him and everything was going good. And everybody basically thought he was the best thing since sliced bread. But Paul did a lot of things that started deteriorating and cracking that wall of love or whatever you want, or loyalty, whatever you want to call it. He's becoming more greedy for money. When he got arrested, the newspaper showed that he made gross $52 million a year. That's just from one company. And he had a multitude of different companies and, you know, so, Paul was different than Carlo Gambino. Paul was more business-wise, more greedy, in a way. And uh, 
the, the, the underlings, the, even the different families, resented some of these things. Then there was tapes with John Gotti and Angelo Ruggiero, and that set off big problems. So Paul's problems were growing by the day. The most loyal people to him, he would do something to them. He owed me 40,000, never paid me. The mafia was falling apart, in our opinion, me and Frankie, especially our family. We all knew what went on, the tapes, all this stuff, we all know what happened. I saw DB one time, he was a made guy in the family, eventually became a captain. DB said, Angelo Ruggiero wants to see you. Could you take a ride out to uh, Queens? And he gave me the time. I said, yeah, I'll go there. I got in the car and I drove out there. I saw Angelo on the corner, I pulled over, I parked the car, I got out, I walked to him, hey Ange, how's everything going? I already knew about his problems. How's everything going? Okay, Sammy says, I need to ask you for a tremendous favor. Whatever I could do for you, bro, what? What do you want me to do? I need you to help me, we're gonna kill the boss. You're gonna what? We're gonna kill the boss. Who? Who's gonna do it? You? Me, John Gotti, I don't see John Gotti. I just see you. Where's John Gotti? Well, you know, Sammy, he's, you know, he's doing something in, you know, I don't know nothing, bro. You're asking me to kill a fucking boss and I gotta know, you don't even have an answer from where the fuck he is. In other words, is he asking me to kill the boss too? Of course, we're together. Then why ain't he here? What is this, just some bullshit message? Could you pick me up a container of milk? You're talking to me about killing the boss. Listen, Angelo, I don't want to talk about it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get back in my car. I'm going to go straight to Staten Island over Frankie and Chico's house. And I'm going to tell him about this conversation. I'm not going to tell nobody else, but I'm going to tell him what you're telling me. You got a problem with that? No, no, Sammy is going to wind up being with us. We're going to reach him. Yeah, all right. And that's what I do. I get back in the car. I drive to Staten Island. I go to Frank and Chico's house. We go in the backyard, and I'm talking to him about what just happened. We're kicking it around for an hour, two hours, three hours. They dealt drugs. They broke every rule under the fucking sun. They got caught on tape talking about the commission, about the bosses, about every fucking thing. They half destroyed the mob with those tapes. So now it's being dumped in our lap. Should we kill the boss and save them? Should we just sit back and let them duke it out and see who wins? That's not my style. That's not Frankie's style. We're not going to do that. Frankie says, it's gotten to the point where Paul, I think, Sammy, we should kill Paul, save John and his whole fucking crew, and make Gozanosha what it used to be. It's deteriorating. Maybe this is a time to change it. If the hours of conversation, if that's what you want to do, he interrupted me. Sammy, everything we talked about, and don't forget what he did to you and your family. Frankie, I'll never forget that. What's stirring around in my head is maybe it's time for me to get even for what he did to me and my family. But I didn't want to do that, Frankie. I wanted to be Goza Nostra about it. Everything that he has done, killing a captain, the Connecticut captain, allowing Chin to do it, 
because he was annoying to Chin. So many things he did. That's what I really need. All of it. I don't forget the other part you just reminded me of. I'll never forget that. So Frankie, I'm gonna agree. If you're part of it and all of this background, I'll be part of it. One condition, Frankie, I want you to be the boss. He don't deserve it. Him and Angelo broke every rule in the book. We're saving them. We're not in trouble. Why should he be the boss? Sammy, I could be his underboss. He can't be mine. He's got an ego like the Empire State Building. You know that. We'll have problems from day one. Let him be the boss. I'll be the underboss. You'll immediately be a captain. In a matter of months, you'll be the Gonzaga of the family. We will be the power behind the throne. We will teach him how to run this family. If he doesn't do it right, if he acts the fool, if he thinks this is a joke, I give you my word, we'll kill him. I'll become the boss and you'll become my underboss. I look square in his eyes. I'm in. I put my hand out and we shook on it. Now it's time for me to become someone in another war. Not the Colombo War, not the Gallo, Profaci, Colombo War. This war. It was time. I said, Frankie, if that's what you want, I'll agree. I think it's time that we change Godzinovsky. This concludes season one of Our Thing with Sammy the Bull Gravano. We're taking a short break. We're working on season two right now, and we'll start to upload them very soon. Thank you so much for listening and your support.